Well, I have several timely updates that I want to share with you before we get to the Wednesday walkabout on Wednesday because I want to give you enough time to purchase if you want to get them for Mother's Day. Probably the best deal I have ever gotten on Amazon. I could not believe it, uh, but it's fabulous and I want to give you guys an inside scoop. So I found these two, look at these. I planted them yesterday. You guys know that I wanted some boxwood here that would make a little bit more, more of a statement within the boxwood village. And I found two of these on Amazon and they were an unbelievable price. They were like $44. If I had gotten those elsewhere, they would have cost a fortune. There was no shipping. And again, if you if you shop at your independent nursery, that's great. Please support local providers. But when there's a great deal like this for a topiary, a boxwood topiary that is already formed, that can handle full sun and it was delivered to my door, then that was worth it to me. So I've got one on this side I planted and I've got one on this side. And this was, what was it called? I, I need to get the exact name for you. And definitely, I will provide the link below. I imagine these are gonna sell out pretty quickly. So, and, and I'm ordering two more, <laughs> two more of them. So, but at $44, it's just a, it's just a, a, a must do. And I wanted you guys to know, because I, I just think they're absolutely fabulous. And you might wanna get a couple of these for Mother's Day or for yourself, you know, Stuart. Sometimes it's even for Mother's Day, it's buy one for somebody else and one for you, just like at Christmas. Okay, so that's the first update. I think it was, it was called, Canterbury or cranberry something uh, variety of boxwood it's new to me so that's another reason I'm excited okay so that's my number one thing I wanted to share number two I thought this would be kind of fun simply because so many people asked about about it and that was someone said oh no Linda did you succumb to pressure and remove the asparagus fern from the window box and no I did not because I love the way this will look once it, it fills out but I did want to remove some of the the density and I wanted to print it back pretty hard primarily because I saw that this pineapple guava wasn't getting quite enough sun it was in the greenhouse over the winter it kind of suffered and it really needs to fill out so I wanted to get as much sun as possible on this pineapple guava so definitely I'm sticking with I'm sticking to my guns with my original instinct and I think you can already see that stuff is starting to fill in pretty beautifully and case in point, I love it when some of my, my visions come to fruition. And speaking of, well, they look here, look here, Stuart. You guys, I want to show you, look at that wonderful flower. I'm going to get some fruiting off of this pine. Look at all these buds. Look at all these buds. So that's incredible. And I just, and even if it didn't fruit, uh, it's just a great plant. It's part of the Southern Living Plant Collection. I love it. So I need, and I've kind of sculpted it. So I want that one to grow in and fill out as beautifully as this one has. So that's why I, that's why I cut that back. The other thing some of you keen-eyed uh, observers noticed, I'm always so impressed with the things that I don't address and you guys notice them anyway. I'm very flattered by that. Um, is that some of you noticed that this is not even well it's not because we had so much rain and even though it's sitting on pavers over here it settled on this side so we're going to remedy that this week and as i come over here here's a surprise look <gasps> does that not just make you so happy the first one. Oh my gosh you guys look and look here's that's quick yeah and here's a baby one so definitely it's going to like this exposure. So I can't wait for the other things to really take off. And when I say not only is it going to, at least until it gets really hot, like, like this exposure, and here's that sun gold tomato that's growing also. Um, but it also loved the rain that we had. And I think that's why stuff is, is really starting to, 
to fill out. Look at this from this angle, Stuart, I'll get out of the way, and look at how gorgeous this is going to be once this color starts spilling out over the front. Really pretty. And then yesterday, I worked out in the garden yesterday from uh, probably eight in the morning until almost eight last night. And it was just sheer bliss. I needed it for my mental health. I think, I think it was time for me to get my hands dirty because I had had helpers so much install the really heavy stuff and do some of the heavy work and now it was time for me to put in some of my perennials additional perennials and things which i will show you on wednesday walkabout i also added another gorgeous pot to echo what was in the window box of this gorgeous scabiella so some of you were wondering what i was going to do with that hanging basket a fan flower and it went into this pot right here. Now the third update for today, I, lo I love it on days, don't you, when the karma, that's my question of the day. Do you have days where sometimes your karma is just great mm -hmm. and then other days where your karma is just bad? <laughs> And it seems it, and it seems to come in a pattern. Well, today I've got great karma because I got a delivery of something for inside this the uh, cottage that I can't wait to show you a little bit later. But the other thing that's happening today is that I am getting a lantern to match these other black lanterns that will go up in that corner there by that sweet, sweet little window. And I've got somebody coming today who's going to trade that out for me. And then once that's done, I'll really feel, I haven't really mulched or done a bunch over here in this corner. Once that is done, then I feel like I can finalize this corner in totality and check that area off of my list. So those are just three little updates that I am free to the frog wanted to share with you today. And next time we're out here, Stuart, it's gonna have to be in the morning when it's cooler and the light isn't quite so harsh. I've already got my mosquito jacket on. Well, very, very good or very bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You guys, I've got a couple of other things that I wanna share with you. So I'm gonna just let Stuart do your editing thing. There we go. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a breezy, cool morning, though it's supposed to get up to, I think, 88 today. But I wanted to take a moment to show you some of the new plants that I recently purchased. I got them at, most of them at Lowe's, but some of them I got online. And I have to show you this one. This is just incredible. It's a variety of boxwood that's new to me. It is a, let me show you the tag. It is Cranberry Creek boxwood. It's already in a conical topiary form. And you guys won't believe this. I got it online for $43 unbelievable. I will definitely put a link below because if I had purchased this at a high-end nursery, it would be considerably more expensive. It arrived in less than a week. I bought two of them. And let me explain my rationale. As many of you have commented, as have I, I, I love the boxwood that is blight resistant, these better boxwood varieties, but they are tall and waiting to grow up. So what I'm gonna do in the corner of this boxwood village on both sides of the walkway is I'm going to install a couple of these conical boxwood. And that will give the illusion of instant maturity. Those were just, again, $43. I cannot, I cannot believe the price point on those. So like I say, I will put a link below. I also got a couple because one of my favorite varieties, in addition to the better boxwood, which is still in the process really of being developed and getting inventory in, is Green Mountain. 
and I got a couple of Green Mountain boxwood online also. These are three gallons, and these two were just $43. A great deal, but not as great a value, I don't think, as the two boxwood cones because they've already been shaped, and that is one heck of a deal. So I'm definitely going to put the link below, and I'll also put the link on Instagram. Another thing that I kind of went wild on because it follows the thematic that I want to have for this area, which is floating, whimsical, hovering. Those are the words that I ascribe to this space. I wanted lots of pollinator-friendly plants, so I'm adding even more salvia. The I believe it was East Friesland that I planted originally. It did so well. I loved the way it looked. And I will also love the way it looks when it's no longer in bloom. So I'm starting to deadhead it now. And it will put out a second bloom, albeit smaller. But in the meantime, it just makes a good stately presence in the garden and will give it a degree of maturity that right now it doesn't have. Look how beautiful that looks. And I'm just loving the way these purples are coming together. Consequently, most of the varieties of new salvias that I got were also in purple, though I got a couple of pink ones for the other side. And if you are in the area, I got these at the Lowe's on May Avenue, which is typically the one I go to simply because it's closer to my home. And then I'm going to be installing some other perennials. I wanted to get all the Southern Living plants in first, but I'll, I will be installing some other perennials and some shrubs that I purchase now that these initial plantings are in place. One of the things that I got, I love, 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 as you guys know, the orange rocket barberry. And I especially love them in combination with golden barberry. So I got a large container of that and we'll be planting it. I want to get this stuff in the ground this weekend, hopefully, because I think we're going to get some more rain next week. I probably jumped the gun a little bit on doing some of this planting. I was doing some planting yesterday and I noticed that the ground still was probably a little bit too wet from the previous rain and it's not a good idea to really work the soil when it hasn't dried out to the extent it should. But again, sometimes my schedule doesn't always coincide with best planting practices. Here are some more pots of salvia. Let's see here got a plant down from the wind and this variety is spring king salvia and it likes full sun which will be perfect for this aspect and look at that just love the color of those blooms and then over here, I've also got some smaller pots. Excuse my camera work. This is New Dimension Blue Salvia. And it too is really lovely. And look at all of those buds. And isn't it just exquisite with the Agapanthus? Now, I am hoping that the indigo frost from Southern Living comes back because it's frost hardy. This blue amethyst acapanthus may not. So one of my strategies is that I am planting 
some salvias amidst and amongst the purple amethyst agapanthus in the event it does not come back. And I really don't anticipate that it will. In the meantime, these little guys will get established. Now I've got a cluster here of what I recognize to be Minoan lay seedlings. I scattered a bunch of them the other day. And these, by the way, the seeds, the seed heads on this are, are not at all small. So I couldn't use my gardening hack on this and a clump just kind of fell into place. I'll probably have to do some thinning in that regard. And then there's kind of a surprise coming this week for the social patio. Another thing, another perennial that I planted primarily in the autumn corner, and that is some pink beard's tongue. You can see right there, it's hovering and waving. Now, I do have some concern that a lot of this is going to be deciduous and I will need some winter interest. Consequently, that's why I'm planting and scattering some more evergreens like boxwood and I'm not sure when you'll see it but I shot a video and mentioned some catoniester that is also a great evergreen so as it's turning out it seems like this side though there are both colors on each side but this side will be more predominantly blues and lavenders, and that side will be more pinks. I wanted to show you those. Let me see if I can gently torque around. I'm no Stuart Perriman. Oh, I also got some dark purple, dark purple Calibricoa. And I'm going to plant some of that in the foreground. And I did not know it was a real pollinator attractor, but it apparently is because yesterday I had some wonderful swallowtails that were visiting that flat. So here's my autumn corner, which I think will be resplendent once it all grows up. I love the color of the foliage that, and the stems. It's got a very autumnal vibe. When these are finished, I will just prune them back and they will grow bushy. Still have to work with all of that brick. I'm hoping that some of that will get used up this week. Put in place so that I'll feel bit closer to completion. Every day we're making strides. I just wanted to give you guys a little update on some of the things that I am planting. More to come. Well, so many of you commented on my selection of Bermuda grass for the rolling terrace. And actually, I didn't select it, it kind of selected itself, it was already here. And Bermuda in Oklahoma is unquestionably the toughest turf that you can plant that can handle intense heat and this brutal west sun and drought. So that is why I am choosing to keep it here on the terrace. The other reason that I like it is in the spring and in the fall, I can overseed it with a perennial ryegrass, a fine blade, typically something like Arnold Palmer or another fine bladed perennial grass seed. And that way, even though Bermuda goes dormant, i.e. turns brown in the winter time, it will remain green. And especially in the summer or in the spring when all the tulips come out, it really greens up. That gives me that lush green canvas. But I promise to show you how you can use a trench to bore, to um, kind of keep the Bermuda grass out of your borders and also 
give it this wonderful, clean, tailored edge. So on a day like today, after rain, and this is typically for me a one time a year thing. Once I get this established, I don't have to do it again. It's just a matter of weed eating and, and edging once a week. So you can see here, I have already started this trench and now I'm going to continue it because this ostensibly will be the border for the roses or whatever I decide to plant in here. I've got another idea that I want to share with all of you. And that leads me to my question of the day. You guys know how much I love boxwood. It is typically um, my evergreen of choice, that and hollies. However, I have a new love. I discovered it um, fairly late in my gardening journey at the fairy tale house, and that was Cotoniester. So if you want an evergreen, alternative, then you might consider Cotoniester. This one makes a brilliant ground cover. It won't get more than one to two feet high. It can handle six hours direct sun. It's wonderful, it's evergreen, and it will cascade beautifully. But, that's, but that leads me to my question of the day. What is one of your favorite evergreen alternatives that you can share with all of us? Make sure to comment below and also make sure to read others' comments because you might get an evergreen solution that's just perfect for your landscape. But I digress, Stuart. So back to right after a rain when the soil is easy to work you come back out and you just, or you come out and you just dig a mini trench. And if I had an existing flower bed, I would do this along the bed line. Now it does require a good pair of garden gloves. You guys know how much I love these cool job garden gloves. They wash beautifully, they're tough, they don't get holes in the tips of the fingers. I'll put a link below. So taking your garden gloves, you kind of pull out the chunks and look there. Look at that beautiful edge that I have. Once all of this dirt is cleaned up, this makes a very tailored look regardless of what variety of grass you have. It's really easy to do if you've got fescue, um, even zoysia, because that isn't quite as tough to break through. Now, how does this help prevent Bermuda from getting into your flower beds? Well, Stuart, let's do a close up here and I'm going to show you. So right here, you can see that there is a long runner. Bermuda's sneaky. That's because Bermuda is sneaky. Here's a short runner. So the brilliance of this is, number one, if this runner wanted to take hold over here, let's pretend that this is the turf side and this is the flower bed side. If this runner wanted to invade the flower bed side, number one, it has to jump the trench. There is a void here, it has to jump the trench. It can't immediately put its runner down and take root in the soil. In the meantime, if I do my edging weekly, all I have to do is get my weed eater and just run it along that edge and I get those runners. That nice, neat void remains, looks tailored, especially from the street, and I have been able to prevent this runner from escaping into the flower bed. Stuart, does that make sense? It does, and I wish I would have known it back when I was doing the, the food garden in my backyard. And it, keeping Bermuda out of that thing was the hardest. That's what led to me stopping. Well, and hopefully you don't, in your flower bed, you don't have existing Bermuda grass. Hopefully this is already an existing flower bed, and all you're trying to keep out is the turf, is the grassy lawn, in which case then, all you're doing is just removing this side 
and you can do, you can really make quick work of this. And again, this is a one time a year thing. So if this edge was an existing flower bed, I wouldn't have to do any of this, any of this uh, grass removal. It would already be an existing bed. I'm just taking off the edge. And then I come back and just run my weed eater or my clippers or my edger right along that edge. And it looks very tailored, very clean. And dare I say, from the street, looks very, very neat. If you go to lindabotter.com, I'll put the whole article that I saw once in Southern Living on how to do this. I learned it originally at a Scottish priory um, many, many years ago. I watched them do it and I thought it was just brilliant. It's intuitive and it might save you some frustration from invading Bermuda grass.